Where do the Utah Utes rank amongst the Pac-12's best teams? And how will the rest of the season play out for the Utes? We'll talk about it on today's show. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. Appreciate all of you who have liked and subscribed to us on YouTube, as well as give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Appreciate all of you for listening in to today's show, which is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code Locked On. that's Locked On all caps, and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. So head over to Underdog today to get in on some of those fun lines. Hello, everyone. My name is JT Wistersill, former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. On today's show, we're going to be diving into where do the Utah Utes rank amongst the Pac-12's best teams? And in order to do that, I brought on friend of the show, Sammy Mora. Sammy, appreciate you for joining us on today's show. And this Utah team has been, it's been a really interesting season, right? You have the two losses on the season, one of them to a Pac-12 opponent in UCLA, but you get the monumental win against USC. So all that leads to where does Utah rank amongst the best teams in the Pac-12? For me, if we're going right now, some people aren't going to like this. So I will have UCLA as the top team. Second, I do have USC still. They're still ranked higher in the rankings. And the reason I'm still going to stick with USC is the next time this Utah team would see them, I would be on a neutral field. And I feel like the Trojans, you have to give them a little bit of an edge in that, especially coming off a heartbreaking loss to this Utah team. I trust their personnel a little bit more right now, even on the defensive side of the ball, even though they gave up more yards to Utah. But look, I mean, neither defense is really a strength in that one. So third, I would have Utah as well and then fourth i would have oregon in that one who utah is going to have a chance to beat in a little over a month but these teams are also good it's so great that the conference is in a position to have four teams in the top 15 like they currently are i should throw in as well my usc ranking is definitely subject to change if we see news that jordan addison is officially done for the year at the moment i haven't seen anything that says that he is but at the moment i have utah as the third best team in the pac-12 just based on what they've done so far this season so I'm going to I'm going to agree with that that UCLA won. Mm-hmm. Um my two though is going to be Oregon. Oh, you do like Oregon. I just like or I like Oregon's personnel. Um <laughs> and like this one is Oregon's a, a a fickle team in my opinion because you either get good Bo Nix or bad Bo Nix. Like it's Very it's true. kind <laughs> of a crapshoot. And if you get a bad Bo Nix game, you're like Oregon screwed. Um <laughs> but I I personally just I like Oregon's personnel just a little bit better. Um, actually, we're we're gonna amend this. We're gonna amend okay. this. So we're gonna go one is UCLA, and then my yep. two. I'm gonna do two. Like I'm gonna do two. B A B C. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> I like that. They're, I think all, they're all good. Because I think I think Utah. Uh, my a, my A B and C is gonna be Utah, Oregon, and USC. Obviously, mm-hmm. so obviously Utah, like based on head to head record, Utah is higher than USC. Obviously, because yes. you know they won on Saturday. But I think if Utah and USC was to meet again, let's say in the Pac twelve championship, I think it's it like like you said, it's gonna be different because it's a neutral site game. But I do have faith in Utah fans to travel out mm-hmm. to make it very True. much like a home environment. Good there point. were there was a good chunk of USC fans there on Saturday, but I don't really feel like they made their like presence felt. And like, yeah, their ticket allotment wasn't like large, but I still think um didn't affect that offense at all it for Utah. Didn't affect <laughs> the offense. And I think that if they were in a neutral setting, I I think there will be USC fans there, but I don't think it would be I think Utah fans would still outnumber them. I agree. Um, so I think that would be another home field advantage for Utah in that instance, just because of Utah's been lucky in Vegas. So I think it just kind of carries on. Um, Oregon, like I already started like saying, you have good Bonix and you have bad Bonix. So it's just kind of dependent on which Bonix team you get. Um, so, but I love, I like Oregon's defense a lot. Mm-hmm. I, I'm a big fan of Noah Sewell. I love his game. I love how he plays. Um, so I think, I think there's a lot of football that needs to be like played between Utah, USC, and Oregon to kind of fully, in my opinion, determine who is who's two, who's three, who's four. Just because it's a it's weird, it, and it's like the Pac-12 is always that conference that's going to eat itself alive. Mm. 
And I think this weekend is going to be a big, like, deterrent, not deterrent, but a big, like, step in the right direction to figuring out who is that second team. Because if Oregon beats UCLA, I can see you, or you making a case for Oregon being two. Mm-hmm. But then you also still have USC and UCLA who have to play each other, and Utah still has to play Oregon. So there's still there's still a lot of football that has to be played, but I think right now Utah is in that 2A through C range yes. is where I'm going to put it. Um, I think UCLA is clearly the best team in this conference, um, mm-hmm. but the other three, they're all separated by like – a little bit like Utah is separated a little bit by Oregon, which is separated a little bit by USC and stuff. And I know fans are probably like, but what about the defense and the kick, like the kickoff coverage? <laughs> yeah. But in head to head action right now that Utah defense has one and you UC- and USC's offense has zero. So you kind of have to take that into consideration. So that was a long winded roundabout answer to say, I don't know Yeah. <laughs> um, where I would rank Utah, but uh, that's that. Yeah. So no, I feel the same way though, because that was my thing is like, I didn't do the, the ABC kind of thing, but basically like two, three, and four were extremely close for me. So I feel the exact same way because there are so many, t- so many talented teams in this conference. And my biggest thing is you just mentioned how so often the conference has kind of ate itself alive. These minor teams have been able to knock off these major teams. I know everyone loves an upset. I really hope that these four teams we've covered can win against the inferior teams and then just kind of beat up on each other a little bit because I think that is what's best for the conference so you could have these teams that remain high up in that situation and it's going to be fun to see how it all plays out and it's a good place for the Utes to be in after that monumental win versus USC and just looking at this Utah team in and of itself right now Sammy I think I feel good about where they're at just coming off the momentum of the game but at the same time it's still hard not to be a little concerned about the defense they've struggled a lot this year thankfully it's the bye week so hopefully they can work on some things they're going to really need to find a way to get pressure with four that's something they're really struggling to do right now got to find out how to get pressure with four and it's nice that you can have some exotic blitzes to bring in as well but it's, there's a couple times you're going to need to drop drop more bodies and you got to get home and that's something they have to do going forward secondary wise i, I feel pretty good honestly because there's multiple times the very the third down play of the game actually even the first play as well of the game Caleb Williams on both those had six plus seconds to throw the first one and hit rice down the sideline rice dropped it the other one he ended up running for 55 yards he had that much time and couldn't find anyone open early on Mm -hmm. that's a positive for this secondary so you just got to figure out how to get home in that regard offensively look I don't know how well Utah is going to be able to run the ball going forward we do not know what's going on with Tavion Thomas as of this recording at the moment hopefully he's back with the team going forward but I liked what I've seen from Makai Bernard so I'm encouraged by that but especially I just feel great about Cam right now I think his ability Mm -hmm. to get those tough yards run and power through for this Utah team as well make those big time throws with his arm that's what has me really feeling good is that combination of cam rising and then that defense led by clark phillips as well i'll add so i still feel like this is a utah team that is very much capable of winning the pac-12 and i mean by the time we're reached the pac-12 championship game i had utah as the third best team in the conference right now i can easily see a world where they're the best and win this conference well and also when you talk about cam you also have to acknowledge the the weapons that he has on the other end of the ball um you know, everyone was kind of like, oh, what's going to happen now that Brandt's gone? But you've seen a lot of guys step up. Like Dalton had the best performance as a t- in a t- from a tight end in like school history on Saturday. Yes. Vele's really taking a step forward in the right direction. Um, Munir McLean has looked good when he's in at tight end. Thomas Yasmin's looks good. Looks good. And then Money Parks, who is a favorite of mine on this team, had that beautiful deep catch deep throw um or yeah the reception on the deep throw from cam last saturday which i think if here's the here's my other thing is if utah's rushing game was struggling but there was nothing coming from the passing game then i would be like yeah this is we're 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 hitting into we're heading into some treacherous 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 waters right now like this is not looking good but since the offensive like since the offensive production is still good with the with the pass game Mm -hmm. I'm not as worried. Cam has proven himself that he can handle it. The receivers have proven that they can make big time catches in big time moments. So I'm not, I'm not worried about offensive production. Like, yes, it would be really, really, really great to get the run game back to where it is, but, or where it was previously, but I'm not worried. Um, I love Makai Bernard. Uh, He's one of my faves on this team. I love what he can do as both a running back and as a receiver. He's one of the best backs I think at catching the ball in the backfield, in my opinion, um, I want to see more of Jalen Glover. I want to see more of Jaquinn and Jackson, but 
I'm like, if the offense is try, if the if offense can put up 43 points on USC's defense, I'm like, not. I'm not like terrified. I'm not scared, you know, because also if you really think about it, the US the UCLA game, the offense kept them in that game most of the time. It was just def- the defense not being able to get a stop. And so I think the offense that we saw versus in versus USC is a vastly different offense than we saw against Florida in week 1. And I think this team is still evolving and so I think there's still room for them to become that number 2 team in the Pac-12. Yeah, 100%. They're in a good spot. That's what's nice about a bye week as well. Just shore up a couple of those things and be able to move forward. Utah sitting at 5-2, and two, but how will they fare in their remaining games? We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to talk to you guys about underdog fantasy underdog fantasy guys has you guys ready to go go to the website at underdog fantasy and create your team and lineup of players and you can just pick if you think they'll go higher or lower than a certain stat total so obviously the youth's not in action this week but there are tons of great college football games still going on so make sure you head over to underdog and look at that it's easy to play and available in over 30 states just pick between two and five players across any team not just the youths and decide if they will finish higher or lower so if you think bo nix is in for a good game you can go with Bo Nix. If you think Jordan Addison is going to have a huge game for the Trojans, hopefully he's able to pull, or excuse me, the USC is actually also on a buy. So if you think that uh, someone from Alabama is in for a great game, then you go with them as well. So you can mix and match your lineup, put them together. It's one of the easiest fantasy games to play. You just go over there. You can win whole, cold, hard cash in a single game. Just go higher or lower in your total and make sure you guys head over to and use the locked on promo that's locked on one word and underdog will double your first deposit up to $100 deposit 100 get a free 100 go to underdogfantasy.com or find underdog fantasy app in the app store google play store and as well as just head over to underdog and get in on that promo code locked on all caps get in on college football pick them action today so head over to underdog and cash in on those so looking at utah's remaining schedule got the nice bye week but it's kind of a weird bye week because you come back from your bye and you have a thursday game quick turnaround versus washington state and let's start there taking on cam ward and this washington state team the cougars have been fun this year i mean they had one of the best wins in the early portion of the pac-12 season going up to wisconsin and being the badgers and look the badgers aren't as good as a lot of people thought they were going to be but that's still a ranked win against a top 20 opponent this washington team was able to go and get they near Nearly beat Oregon 44 to 41 as well. Look, lost to USC, but we're in that game early until the Trojans kind of pulled away late. Struggled at Oregon State, but we know how good Oregon State is at home. Utah learned that the hard way last year. So I think this is going to be a good challenge for the Utes. If this game was not off a bye week, so let's say Utah played on Saturday and had to come back from Thursday, I would be extremely nervous for this one because it's so hard to come down from such a high and reset. But when you have this much time, I expect this Utah group to be reset, be refocused, be ready, sure up on a couple of those things as well, put a couple of new things on the field that might have, while the Cougars are preparing for things, they're going to be like, whoa, we didn't see this from Utah on film. And I think all that is going to allow the Utes to get a win coming off their bye. I still am a little like this is uh, this game is I'm nervous too. I am. I'm a nervous. I'm nervous about it because it, it has all of the uh, the makings of a trap game for me. Sure. Um, Utah's coming off a very high emotional win, like you said, against USC. And I think Washington State's one of those teams that is like middle of the pack. Like they could cause some disruption and like for the up for those four teams that we talked about previously, like they almost did with USC until USC kind of put the pedal to the metal and and pulled away and Oregon. Yeah. And nearly beat Oregon. So like Washington state has what it takes to be a, an upsetter is what I want to call them. Like someone who is in the conference that can pull some things. Um, Am I as worried for this game as I would have been maybe a couple weeks ago with like a sec, like sec, like actually let me, let me take that back. Would I be, am I as nervous for this game this year as I was last year with the secondary situation? No, because Washington State, you know, they're they're a they're a pass heavy team. Cam Ward has kind of has had his moments where he's really good, but on the other side, he's thrown eight interceptions this season, which is something that's like kind of like a look at this. Like he's 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 still making kind of he's making those mistakes that you kind of wish he wouldn't be making. Like he's trying to force balls and stuff. So they're not as big of a rush team as they have been in years past. Um, you know, they had a couple of good running backs in the last couple of years. They're not that way, but they're still a very pass-heavy team. And so I think this defense is going to be 
prepared for it. It's going to be interesting to see if they can get a rush going on, which is something we've also talked about. But um, I can't remember who asked who it was last yesterday at media availability or on Monday, like the situation of playing in Pullman. But like Pullman is a college town, is a college town with that is all they can have. All they do is watch football at times. So it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with that loud environment, because Honestly, outside of the swamp, Utah hasn't had that experience this year. Like UCLA, there was nobody there. Arizona State, there was nobody there. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how this team reacts to the noise and the situation. Um, the fact Utah is favored in this game still is is something good to like keep in mind because like people are like, well, it's it, they won close, but it's like wins count as wins. So I think Utah comes out of this one with the win, but I think it's going to be. It's going to be a close one. It's going to be those squeaky, like the squeaky close win that like Utah fans are kind of like, oh, like, ooh, I didn't yeah. like that. So, yeah, let's hope that's not the case coming off a of bye. But with the way a lot of these wins have looked that year can very well be the case. So it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out there. So going that I'm going to group the next two in together, Sammy. So from there, Utah takes on Arizona and Stanford. And while both these programs, I think Arizona more so trending in the right direction, just in general, I'll say got some nice recruits in there, done some nice things. Stanford, eh, not, not as much, although they are coming off a nice win against Notre Dame. I feel like Utah is going to take care of business in both these games. And I feel like they win by at least touchdown, a uh, touchdown in each of these games as well. Actually, not even to touchdown. I'll go by 10 points plus. I just feel like Utah is a superior team in both these actions. I expect this to be a nice confidence booster for the defense, especially. I can see Clark Phillips getting another pick six, which would be incredible. Or even a guy like Cole Bishop, I'd love to see him run one back in one of these games. And I think we'll see the offense kind of continue the productive track they've been on this season. Both these teams can do some nice things, but I feel like this Utah team coming off their bye is going to have that momentum after a win versus Washington state. And I think they beat both Arizona and Stanford at home. So Arizona is the one, the the team that I'm more interested in watching than Stanford at this point. Um, Jacob Cowing is one of the most fun wide receivers to watch currently in the conference. Um, I think I think he's going to try and have something to do, have something to say about having like an upset at home for Utah, um, like upsetting Utah at home. You know, Jaden Delora transfers from Washington State down to Arizona. So Utah's familiar with him. Um, We're also familiar about how sometimes he, I don't want to say his cockiness because at times, like, I think one of the biggest things I remember about Jaden Delora is how he flashed the U down during the 2020 Utah Washington, the the game bring for versus. Whoa, I am struggling today. The Utah versus Washington State game in 2020, he did use down in the first half, and then Utah proceeded to truck him in the second half. (laughs) So I don't want to say it's a a cockiness about him, but I think he he thinks that they won the game before the final whistle blows. And I think Jed Fish is a very good coach. He's really – he's turned this Arizona program around in only his second year. You know, they have three wins this season, which I think is – They had one last year. They had one last year. So it's we're in the right direction. And I – I thought Wash. I thought Arizona was going to be one of those teams that was kind of su- going to surprise people this year. Um, have they? No. So that's a little bad on my part. But I like Arizona. I think they're a good team. Uh, I think they just need maybe one or two more years, and then we're talking about Arizona maybe being six and six and making it to a bowl game and stuff. I don't think they're they're bowl eligible this year. That's just mm-hmm. not in the cards, in my opinion. Um, Stanford, you know, I. Uh, I want to root for Stanford and I want to be like, yeah, Stanford, you go. But at this point, I think that the Stanford train has kind of left the station, Um, especially with EJ Smith out. Like now there's not really anything that I am like drawn to on that Stanford team. Um, McKee is a good quarterback Mm -hmm. at times. Sometimes, again, he makes some mistakes that you're kind of like questioning. You're like, what? Why did you do that? Yeah. And so. I think they. I think Utah finishes the season undefeated at home. Um, I think. I want to say they win by seventeen points both games, just because I think that's just how it's gonna. I yeah, I think it's gonna turn that way because. Neither team is particularly good. Um, I think we're also at the point where, we're seeing maybe, Bryson Barnes and the second string in both of those games because. You know, you have down the stretch, you have Oregon coming up. So you kind of need to have make sure you're all your starters are healthy and stuff. So I think both of those are wins. So I think heading into that Oregon game, um, they're three and oh from like from the bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. Finish undefeated at home, and then you go into the huge one. Taking on Oregon, as you mentioned. Oregon, a really weird season. You start out, you lose 49-3 to versus Georgia. We learned pretty quickly. It seemed like it was more good Georgia, it, and I do feel like it still is, although Georgia struggled a little bit where it's some of those things I will be interested to see once this Oregon team kind of does play. I mean, they still got UCLA this weekend, and they got, obviously, Utah as well later in the season. I'm interested to see them again against some of the best teams as well, seeing as they were very close to being a two-loss team, as they should have lost that one to Washington State. But going into this game versus the Utes, look, I this is the one early on in the preseason I picked as my loss. I had Utah going 11-1, and one, and I circled the Oregon game as the loss. I thought Dan Landing's group was going to be able to rebound and respond after a couple of bad losses just at some point in the Pac-12 schedule and beat this Utah team. But now that Utah's already suffered their couple losses, I actually feel more confident than I did going into the season about this game because I feel like this Utah team is going to be ready. They're not going to be riding the high of any of that. They know that this is the biggest game remaining on their schedule if they want to make it back to the Pac-12 championship as well. This is another must-win game for this Utah team. We know what they did to Oregon last year as well, obviously. So this Ducks team is going to come in fired up. You mentioned Sewell. I, and I've been a Bo Nicks fan for a while, and I know that you can get two very different Bo Nixes as well. In this game, I feel like this Utah secondary, guys like Clark Phillips, JT Broughton as well, RJ Hubert, they're going to be able to make some plays on Bo Nix, and I do think that will be a different. This will be a tight, a close game. You mentioned Bryson Barnes. I def I agree. If we don't see Bryson Barnes in the fourth quarters against both Arizona and Stanford, something went very wrong. We ain't going to see Bryson Barnes in this one, but I do believe we'll see a Utah win off another really strong performance from Cam Rising. I... I've always wanted to go to Austin, and I think that yes, this game is something that fans are are going to be excited about. And I think Utah and Austin has been – it's been a wild journey is what I'm going to say. I think the biggest win Utah's ever had up in Austin was uh, the 52-20 to 20 game, I, I think, was the score when they beat U Oregon in 2015. Um, I know Utah scored 52. I just can't remember how many Oregon scored. But I think this season has the, the makings of being another – good win up in Austin. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. That's my thing. I think this is going to be a like a three point win or a two point win or even a one point win. Like I don't think I don't think Utah's gonna like steamroll Oregon. I think Oregon's gonna come in and be ready to take on Utah, especially after being embarrassed twice by them last year. Yes. So I think there's a lot of players still on that team that remember that too. Just because yeah I there's a, does not mean there's a lot of guys that left as well. There's a lot of that state. There's a lot, and I think Dan Lanning also knows how much this this game is going to mean to his program, especially after what happened last season. So, and I also just feel like Bo Nix at home towards the end of the year, I have a feeling, I don't know if that's senior night for them, I feel like we might get a good Bo Nix game, but I, I want to say it's going to be like a 42-43, kind of like the USC game with Utah yeah. winning again. I just I just yeah, feel it in my soul just because defensively, I think Oregon, like defensively, Oregon has what it takes to beat this Utah offense, but I think this Utah offense knows what the, USC, what the Oregon defense is going to throw at them because of last year. But on the other side, the Utah defense – um scares me in this sense in this game especially on the defensive line just because i oregon is one of the the more balanced teams in this conference i just the run defense just is very scaring me and i feel like this if this is a game that utah loses it's it's lost based on the defensive line's performance because i think oregon has the ability to just pound the ball th down utah's throat and just just take them apart that way and like again we could see a completely different Utah defensive line next week versus Washington State so I think that is something I think we need to like take into consideration is like seeing like what we see from the defensive line from then to determine how I feel like things are going to go in November yeah, I totally agree. Especially like you talked about just this game in the trenches. Oregon is so good in the trenches and that offensive line is one of the best in the conference. So it's going to be exciting to see how it plays out. And that means we have one game left. We both picked Utah to win. Something gives me a feeling we're both going to pick Utah to finish their season with a win as well. well how do you, how do you know that? I like the bucks. <laughs> I, I was happy they won on Saturday. I you was see? happy I, they won too. I was happy. I, our beloved buffs, you yeah. know, we, we good for them. But honestly, yeah, Utah, if Utah doesn't win this game, there's something seriously wrong. Um, Colorado is not good, not good at all. And I think you, sorry, I stepped, I stepped all over you on this one. I am so sorry, my dude. I was just, just going to say this day bad. 
they're bad. <laughs> they are bad. They have so many guys that have announced their intention to transfer so far that I'm mm-hmm. like, who's left? Programs who's left in that much disarray don't beat programs like Utah who have Especially- so many things figured out. And I understand, like, it's at home for Colorado and stuff like that, and it's probably going to be a snowy game and stuff. But, like, Utah plays in the snow, too. Utah knows what it's like. Like, that's if it if this was, like, a USC Colorado or, like, UCLA or some team that's not used to playing in the snow, then maybe I'm saying, well, maybe Colorado might be able to pull the upset. But, no, like, Utah, if there's any team in the Pac-12 that's used to playing the snow other than Colorado, it's Utah. Like, that's... That when people use weather as an excuse for why someone like why Utah's gonna lose a game, I think that's kind of silly. Um, that's why I thought the whole humidity argument with the swamp game with the Florida game was like I felt it was kind of funny. I was like, eh. mm-hmm. humidity, altitude, yeah. I feel like they're different things, but whatever. Um, anyways, I think Utah easily wins this game. I think this is another game where we see Bryson, um, maybe, maybe, maybe Nate Johnson. Oh. Still, yeah, he's still got that redshirt season. Still has a chance to play in some games. If we we can see Nate Johnson in at least one game this season, I would be a very happy camper. That's right. Um, just because I'm a big Nate Johnson fan. Um, I love his game and stuff. So, yeah. There's not really much to say about Colorado, so I apologize for steamrolling you on this one. <laughs> I said we already – I mean, I was literally just going to end it with day bad, and that was it, going to move on from it from there. So, either way, Utah finishes the season undefeated in terms of after their bye. We both have them doing that, which means – we're going to keep the predictions going because that means they're in the Pac-12 championship game. So for me in the Pac-12 championship game, I would have Utah facing off against, I do think it's going to be UCLA. I think UCLA Same. is going to be able to reach this. And I think Utah gets the revenge. Look, I'm obviously biased. I got a bunch of stuff hanging in this house right now that literally is for Utah. But I do think this Utah team is going to come back in. I think they're definitely going to have – they are they won't – we talked about them having home field advantage against USC. They will definitely have one against UCLA down in Vegas. And I think this Utah team is going to come out ready, hungry, and ready to go. I think we're going to see Cam have another fantastic performance. I think we'll see the defense rise up to the challenge after what happened last time around and force mm-hmm. DTR into a couple turnovers that I do think is going to allow Utah to repeat as Pac-12 champions – and make it back to that Rose Bowl. Here's my thing with this, because I have Utah UCLA if you get to this point too. Mm -hmm. If you get into the position where, let's say UCLA runs a table and beats Oregon on Saturday, beats USC, and they are undefeated. So then you get into the Pac-12 championship where it's Utah UCLA, okay? And let's say UCLA is like one step ahead, one step to getting to the playoffs. I think... Like if Utah was to lose that game, I still think you I think you have Utah and USC are both like with two losses. And let's say Oregon's let's say Oregon loses to Utah and UCLA. So you have two losses there. So every team except for UCLA has two losses in conference. How, who's to say that the Pac twelve or the Rose Bowl won't jump Utah and take USC to go to the Rose Bowl if Utah loses? Because if Utah loses the Pac twelve championship and UCLA wins, UCLA is probably going to the playoff. And yeah. then Point. You have Utah, who is two. You have three loss Utah, but you have two loss Oregon, and you have two loss USC. What's to say that the Rose Bowl won't jump over Utah and take that would hurt. USC or Oregon to go to the Rose Bowl instead of Utah, even though Utah lost and technically should go to the Rose Bowl because they lost to the Pac-12 champion. Um, that's why this whole thing is so con- like con- this is a confusing situation for me. This this one is like. Because, yeah, then if Utah beats UCLA, then Utah's going to the Rose Bowl, but then there goes the Pac-12's chances of making it to the playoffs. I know. So it's like this is such a double-edged sword that it's it's hard to think about and it's hard to, like, process. Because, yes, I want to see Utah win a Pac- another Pac-12 champion- championship and I want to see Utah back in the Rose Bowl, but at the same time, the Pac-12 has been dying to get into the playoffs for years now, and I think it would be fun to get some representation up in there even though it is UCLA and even though they did beat Utah. Do you so, think they would in a rematch? Do you think UCLA would beat Utah? It de- See, again, it depends on how the defensive line performs because I think a lot of this is dependent on how the defensive line comes out next week because mm-hmm. they everyone else has had their crap together with the exception of, like, the kickoff unit. We'll, like, we'll, like table that for a little bit. Yeah, field goals. The, the the whole special teams unit has been like, we'll table that. Like, I can go yes. on for hours about that. But the secondary's been playing well. 
it's the front seven. It is the linebackers and the defensive line that have been the reason why Utah has lost some games this season. So if we see a vast improvement from them heading into Washington State, then maybe we're, th- we're talking about like Utah beating US- UCLA. But if Utah lose, if Utah gets trucked by Washington State and Oregon, or like not tr- like they win the game, but their defensive line still looks like crap, and, yeah. and the linebackers look like crap. There's no way Utah's going to beat UCLA again because UCLA has the the blueprint of what to do to beat Utah because it worked. So mm-hmm. why not do the same thing again? Because if it's if it's not broken, why are you going to fix it? Like why are you going to try and make it different? And like yeah, Utah would would prepare with what UCLA gave them last time, but I still think Utah like loses because if the defensive line is struggling then how what's to say the defensive line isn't struggling now i know that that was like a long tangent and i'm sorry i'm sorry to everyone who's listening because they're like yes we know the defensive line and the linebackers are, are struggling that's true but it's that i think i'm not saying the entire season is dependent on that those two position groups but i think in a lot of ways it feels like it I'll it say. feels like it because they're everyone else has their crap together, and I understand that it's a team and it's not an I thing, but like it's the it's Achilles getting, heel of this Utah team, right? It now. is, it's, it is, and that's something that I never thought I would say is that our linebackers and our defensive line is the Achilles heel of a Utah team, and it really is right now. So it's gonna be interesting to see if they can do it. But Sammy, you didn't give me a straight answer, so before we get out of here, I want to know is this Utah team going to repeat as Pac 12 champions? Do you believe? Can I give you an answer after the Washington State game? Because I just need to see the defensive line and the linebackers because I'm scared because they, Charbonnet had a career night and DTR ran all over that team. So I just, I, I have reason to, to pause. And like, I know it probably hurts people, but my heart is leaning towards if it's the Utah UCLA rematch, I'm like 49% no Utah lose. I'm 49% UCLA wins. 49% 49% UCLA win. Oh, no, wait, no, wait. I got that backwards. 49% yeah. Utah wins and like 51% UCLA wins, but that could change at any given moment. So we'll I like see. how you said your heart, not your head, by the way, because I feel like your heart would be with Utah. So I feel like your head would be where you would. <laughs> it's, you know, my heart and my head are kind of the same thing at this point. You know, you yeah. cover a team for so long that it just kind of merges into That's one. So. <laughs> oh, that is a good point. Well, Sammy, we appreciate you stopping by here. What kind of things do you have coming up with Utah? Um, just a lot of, uh, writing, just writing content. Our weekly podcast for subscribers, um, in the zone will be publishing weekly. So yeah, uh, just come on over to Uzone. We have a lot of fun, a lot of great content and it's always a party over at Uzone. Yes, it is. I can vouch for that. So appreciate all you guys for joining us throughout this week on Locked on Utes. It's been a fun bye week, having a couple fun guests on as well. We look forward to bringing you guys lots of game coverage next week when the Utes are going to head up to Pullman and take on Washington State. So make sure you guys keep it here. But if you are in the market for a second listen every day, check out the Locked on Pac-12 podcast. Spencer McLaughlin has you covered. Tons of great experts and local guests coming on to bring you the coverage of the Conference of Champions that you guys love. So enjoy college football. Hope you guys can take have some fun during the bye week and we will see you on Monday. But thank you once again for listening to Locked On News.